Hey there, today we're gonna go over my practice routine just to show you guys what I do every day when I play that allows me to do like the high range videos and technique videos and stuff like that. Um, so the first thing I do is just start off with the basic Schlossberg exercise, just exercise one in the book, except I do my own version of it. I extend the range down to a pedal B flat and I do a couple of extensions when I reach seventh position in the higher partials as you'll hear. on a lot of extended technique stuffs I usually add a split tone into the middle so you'll hear that next reach seventh position I do some low range warm-ups to work through the registers with just air using the notes B, E, low C, pedal G, pedal E, and then back up.
From there, I do a couple of glissando exercises in the same register, starting on middle B flat, going from first to seventh. <laughs> listening for full resonance through the entire glissando and kind of starting the glissando right away. It's feeling a little sticky, so I'll quickly take care of that. I use Yamaha, Yamaha's not, some people call it lovingly, I assume. What I usually do is I let my slide drain out, use my water spray, use a little cheesecloth, and gently. Wipe off some residue, and then apply some Yamaha to the stocks. There may be a drip or two up here, whatever's left over. And then if you have a single bore slide, you can do this. I work on the slide from both sides so i'll flip it and just work it in just a second take it back off put it on the correct way and just try to make sure it gets spread around and then just a little bit more water Ta -da. so then i also do just a little exercise to go through from high range to low range um it's basically just a diatonic little exercise with all air. So you'll just hear smooth glissandos and air over the brakes if, you know, all goes according to plan. <laughs> Thank uh -huh. 
And here I'll do an exercise that I picked up from Peter Steiner's wonderful warm-up book where he does kind of half-step glissandos starting on middle B-flat and, and going down a partial and then down to low B-flat. Does that out to sixth and seventh position. And then um, one thing I do is I articulate them and come back up. You'll hear the difference between the the slide and the articulation. And this is really the first articulation exercise I might do for the day. <laughs> doing everything articulated, trying to sound as smooth as the glissando versions. some of the like um very fundamental lip exercise lip slur exercises i originally got these from joe alessi's warm up i have some coffee and i have some water cover your bases yep. <laughs> alternate slurring and tonguing at the very end and at the very beginning also. Acidic, but I'm willing to take that risk early in the mornings, and they're very tiny cups. But thank you. And then I do the same thing reverse, starting on the low B flat. <laughs> build up and by slowly I mean I add in the fourth partial um, I just go through from seventh to first with just air and then you'll see the fireworks kind of start a couple minutes after this for the fun stuff so 
if you've listened so far to like the really basic fundamental stuff in, in two or three minutes you'll start to hear some more fun stuff all right <laughs> exciting yet but it's all part of the necessary build here I do like kind of my first and only metronome work of the day I set a simple metronome to 126 and I practice um, single tongue articulations starting on low E going up to middle B flat and then double tongue articulations coming back down um, the trick is here that I start on a different 16th every note. Hi from the Philippines. Kumaste. double tonguing starting on the K tongue when it's off the beat on the second and fourth sixteenths I should say. <laughs>
metronome and I just kind of go through the second third fourth partials um, rapidly with the lips and then every position I alternate double tonguing so this is kind of a fun exercise it took me a while to develop it but um yeah you'll hear that this is starting on the second third fourth partials <laughs> It always needs some work, but I like to do it a little bit early in the session just to start myself off with some tricky technique stuff. Then I do the same thing on the first, second, third partial. One, two, three, two, one. Then I do the first thing from three, two, one, three, two, one. So I don't go back and forth, I just reset. And then I do triple tonguing on the pattern when I tongue it. <laughs> same exercise starting on the fourth partial down to the first partial and I do it as a rapid lip slur and then a single tongue and then a double tongue. The single tongue and double tongue don't sound great yet. They're works in progress but that's true of anything with practice. Mm -hmm. 
As you can probably hear, the double tonguing one doesn't sound great yet. <coughs> but the hope is that I'll just keep chipping away with it and little by little it'll sound better and better. Now I do the same thing going starting up one partial. <laughs> Yeah, the double tongue one's still really hard for now, but like I said, just keep working on it and trying to make it cleaner and cleaner. I got that exercise from uh, trombonist Jonathan Rondazzo, his warm-up, which he shared on the International Trombone Hang, which is a pretty cool like YouTube series you should check out if you're interested in that stuff. From here, I play up until the natural seventh partial, starting on the fundamental, not the pedal, but the first like uh, partial in the series. And I play up to the natural seventh. Um, when I get to out of seventh position, I kind of temper the note into the next diatonic note. You'll kind of hear. <laughs> the octave that time get a little distracted doing live stuff <laughs> slurred and tongued passages and what i'm watching for i spent the first couple of years doing this exercise is to make sure that there's not a lot of motion in my corners i usually i did this with a mirror every day for like two or three years it was horrible but it got me to have really firm corners and minimize motion here uh it's my theory that every muscle that you use in your jaw is kind of another thing that can go wrong so you want to minimize like the things that could go wrong from here now, now I go up the full two octaves. <laughs> time my low b flat felt like it was a little pinched so i'll try just the low b flat one more time just to make sure it doesn't feel like it's going when i get back down <sighs> Here I just do a couple of um, skip partial, going like uh, partials one, two, four, two, one in all seventh position. You'll see this figure a lot in Bach, like it's kind of part of the famous um, first Bach cello suite. I just do it in all seven positions because I just do most of my exercises in all seven positions. <laughs> Thank you. 
So all so far, we're about a half hour in, and it's all pretty basic stuff, except for like the, the faster lip stuff. And speaking of the faster lip stuff, now I do a module on lip trills. I do that same 2-4 um, skip partial as a trill and alternating as a trill and a double tongue, which takes a little while to work up to, but is fun when you get there. And then I do low lip trills alternating with um, double tonguing. So I'll do second, third partial, starting on kind of FB flat in the middle of the staff. <laughs> Same thing on first, second partials, low B flat and F. It's kind of a silly sound, but if you can get the low lip trills to feel like they're anything like real music, it probably means that the high ones will sound like music. Hopefully. Now I start on the middle B flat, B flat D, the third, fourth partials. <laughs> I should mention that the double tonguing was kind of inspired by Christian Lindbergh playing the Vivaldi Winter. He has this whole section in um, the middle of the first movement, which is just one of the most brilliant things I've ever heard, where he's kind of taking these double stops on the violin and double tonguing them all in the high register and alternating one note at a time. It's really ridiculous if you haven't heard it. And um, I thought about what exercises I could do to approximate something like that. And this is pretty much what I came up with. So for me, every exercise that goes into the high register, I like to um, match with one that focuses on the middle and low register. From here, I just do really simple um, three, two, one, two, three on the partials. Just again, all seven positions. And this is just to kind of recenter myself and like relax before I do my first like real high note warm up.
And again, that's just really nice and relaxed. I'm not very worried about sound or production or anything else. I'm just trying to think about the outcome of what I'd like, a big full resonance sound that's smooth, has a nice legato to it. It's just really pulling through the notes and pulling through the partials and trying to center each one and get these smooth connections. From here I do <clears throat> what's my first high note warm up. And this is the one that's kind of like key to what I feel like developing the high range has been. And it is very simply two octave arpeggios starting on low E. I use um, major chords and every day I go up as high as I can, like every day. And the key to it for me is coming back down with a good sound. If I reach a high note and I come back down and the sound is compromised, pinched or something like that in the low register, it means I did something wrong to get the higher note. So I always listen for that low register when I come back to it. And um, you'll hear when I get up to like a C, trigger C, I start to come back down three octaves and later I start to come back down four octaves. And you'll hear as I go through it. So this is just starting on low E, and this is an exercise I've done uh, pretty much every day for going on 19 years or something like that. I've never suffered from swelling so much while practicing lip slurs. I try to make sure everything is as easy as possible and that I'm putting no extra mouthpiece pressure or anything like that to cause the nose to happen. So maybe that, uh, make sure you're not using too much pressure on the mouthpiece, if that helps. It's hard to tell without seeing somebody play, but that would just be the advice off the top of my head. <laughs> when I come back down an extra octave. And the goal for this is to make like a high C sound, just like a normal note when you get used to it. It shouldn't sound like I'm in the high register yet. <laughs> Every, every week or so, I do this with a drone. I usually use this thing called Tun Tuner Time app. And I just generate like the note that I'm on and then just go up or down, whatever I'm working on, just to make sure that my sound is centered and that I work on intonation about once a week. So I'll do that now for E flat. <laughs> And then I'll do that for real later in the week. I'm just not there mentally today. So that was E flat. We're still going up. We're just going to keep going up. It's going to take another few minutes. <laughs> I do just little 
whatever is when I'm coming back up like that at the very end. It differs from day to day. I just kind of let it go with how I feel. So that gets us to high F. And from here, I just that's where the exercise I learned is from, again, from Joe Alessi's warm-up. Like, um, he's, his exercise stopped on the high F, and one day I just asked myself, like, you know, why not more? And I've just been following that thought ever since. chops as possible, try to minimize motion in the corners in the face. us to the high B flat. From here um, on the B and higher, yeah, for, um, if you play trump and you want to try trombone, um, just get like a P bone and mess around with that or get a cheap used trombone for like a hundred bucks and just get used to the positions. There's seven positions, like seven valve combinations. And you can kind of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They're kind of equidistant from each other. That's the fastest advice I could give you for that. All right. So now we're on the high B. <clears throat> what I do with this exercise is I play up to the high B and back down, however far back down I feel like going that day. And then I restart the exercise, but articulating first on the high B. So this one took a while to develop, and I don't recommend it at first. But when I got really comfortable in this extreme high register, I want to make sure I could articulate the notes not just scoop up to them. All right. And now starting on the high B. I'm not very hard on myself when I'm in this register. I just kind of let what happens happens. When you play with a drone, it's a little bit easier to kind of nail the pitch. Uh, when you're not on a live stream too, it's also I take maybe a little bit more rest in between these exercises, which also makes it a touch easier. So I might not get to super B flat on today's live stream, but usually it's around super B flat, super C. All right, here we are with regular high C. And again, it's trying to make sure I can come back down to that trigger C with like anything that's like a good sound. And now starting on the high C. Yeah, I practice slur exercises like this, and I work in tonguing exercises also. I did some tonguing exercises earlier in the stream just to make sure I do my 16s and stuff like that were working. And later on, I do different tonguing exercises depending on where I am with this. All right, so now we're on um, D flat. squarely up there. So I'll just quickly throw us on a drone for today, just to make sure I have a little reference.
coming back up is feeling a little harder than it does normally too. So if you see me taking an extra break or you have any questions for the chat, now is a great time because otherwise we're just going to be staring at each other. I don't have any recovery practices. I do this routine every single day. So like no matter what it happens and I guess that makes it kind of a recovery practice. But I remember um, I used to actually do my practice sessions even after recitals, if I had a recital in the middle of the day, I still do that. It's just um, hitting this up every single day kind of gives you the strength to get through a, like a lot of playing. Cause mainly I do like solo and contemporary solo recitals and chamber recitals that require like a different type of face than orchestra playing. So, cause I do this every single day, you just kind of, you build up adaptation over time. All right. Now we're on super, super E flat. Hmm. Oh yeah, valve trombones. They're normally not very good, but they're fun. So there you go. I have one at home. It mostly stays in the closet. All right, high range is warming up a little better than I thought, kind of settling into it a little bit. Sometimes there's a break around high B flat, high C, where you're like, I don't know if this is going to happen for the day, and then it just kind of get over it, and it starts working again. So now we're on E, same thing in E. are good because they help you find the center on the way back down and the top notes get really floaty because the partials are so close together that it's just nice to have a reference point when i start getting up there i don't really worry so much or hold myself to like the absolute like highest standard it's more just like about getting through it and just doing adaptation over time some days it's stronger than others but in that range the notes are so rarely used that it's not really worth stressing about because if you start stressing the mental inner critic gets going and you don't need that especially for like an athletic just warm-up all right so now we're on super f this is a really good touchstone note for me to see how the day is going. All right, so worked. That's always good. And now I try to, again, articulate on that F6 <clears throat> and come back down. Because it's like one thing to get up to those notes. It's like another thing to start on those notes. And I know if I can start on those notes, come back down and come back up, then like they're really solid for the day and they're like usable. I can tell composers that like, well, the composers I trust that like, you can write this note. Uh, 
is okay. It's okay. <clears throat> but again, no stress about it. It probably works better on days where like I have an extra 10 minutes built into this playing, but I want to make sure I get through enough for you all to see the daily routine. So <clears throat> we're just going to go onwards and upwards. Now on F sharp. Yeah, that one was kind of cracky in the middle. Got the high F sharp, but the notes in between weren't great. Sometimes I would just stop here for the day, but I'm going to keep going for now just to see if we can get up to the normal high B flat. See if I can just focus and center a little bit better on the G. was a little better that's a nice encouraging sign it means that like i'm not blowing myself out too quick um i usually do about an hour and a half to two hour warm-up and maintenance every single day and then every day that i can i do maybe an extra two three hours on repertoire those days get fewer and farther between though like as you have like a family life and jobs and stuff like that Back in school, I used to do probably between six and 10 hours of playing a day. Not all continuous, but like with little breaks and between rehearsals and stuff like that. And it was just something I built up to over time. I never really had teachers, so I just thought I had to work hard to compensate for that. And I was lucky enough to be able to do that without developing like really bad habits or like too much stress on my face. All right. A flat. That was a tough one to tell. Uh, but it came back down and the sound was nice. So we're going to try to start on that high A flat and come back down and see what happens there. break from the drum all right next we'll do a and then finally we'll see if this b flat is working for you all today normally i'm these days i'm getting to about the c every once in a while the c sharp above these notes but again live stream where you're trying to compress stuff and not take as much rest as i normally would between exercises it gets a little trickier but it's a good challenge so thanks for listening all right Ugh. Hi, A. I'm not going to help if I have a bad start on it. So I'll just recenter for a second. And finally, high B flat. We'll see if this comes out. try it once without the drone because the drone starts to drive me crazy 
That's why I only do it really like once a week. Check my emails really quickly. Um, the world hasn't ended. Huh. So that's good. And I'll try that B flat one more time with, you know, 30 seconds rest rather <laughs> than 15 seconds rest or whatever we're doing right now. So from there, you just say, okay, that's where it is for today. And I do that every day, just finding where that upper limit is. And from here, I do a couple of warm down exercises. The first one still goes pretty high, but it's variable. You can stop in whatever octave you want and do the glissando. So it's from a low E, I go up um, three octaves, four E's and then do a gliss to first position and back. And then I come back down and I stop at each octave and do the same gliss. And I kind of briefly pause the glissando on each whole step. Um, I also do that with a legato tongue because that first one was all air. So I do legato tongue next. kind of like a staccatissimo tongue or just a really, really short tongue. Fun. Um, on days where the high range is feeling really good, I'll do that up extended one octave, but I don't want to put you all through that right now because eh, high range was feeling like a 60% a day. And it needs to be at least 62% to do that top octave. All right. And here, because everything that I do that goes high needs to be balanced by something that goes low, I do my first exercise on pedal tones for the day. So just very simple B flat, bass clef staff, down to the pedal tone, down a half step, repeat till you're done. When you get in that range, the notes start to sound real weird. And I I really have barely any idea of what I'm doing, but I can hear something's getting lower. So I'm not going to stress about it. That's like the first half of my warm-up and routine. From here, I do some other exercises that focus on the high range followed by the low range exercises. I'll go through them now. Um, the first one, again, these both are from Joe Alessi's routine with modifications, is doing a two octave harmonic glissando um, slowly and then three times twice as fast. So it'll be easier to hear than it is to explain. <laughs>
might hear every, I come back down to the fifth or the octave. When I was listening back to a practice session a few years ago, I realized that my low fifths weren't centering very well in these kind of rapid harmonic sandals. So now I alternate when I do the faster ones between coming back down to the fifth and coming back down to the root, just to make sure that it's like I'm centering at least a little bit on the low fifth. <laughs> Even now you can hear it's a little sloppy on the fifth and the root. I'm going to do that one in G over again. <laughs> When things go kind of really wrong, like notes get clipped or something, I generally redo the exercise unless it's in the extremes. Otherwise, I'm not super concerned with many things yet. It's more of an athletic practice where it's more just like stretching, where every time you stretch, you're not exactly concerned with like 150%. Like I'm stretching absolutely as far as I can, absolutely as perfectly as I can. No, I'm like, getting ready to do the good work on music later. All right. Every time I get to first from seventh, I like to do the same exercise articulated in seventh and first. <laughs> Just to make sure that I'm not really leaving out articulations. Um, now I do the same thing going up to the third above the B flat, going up to D and stopping on each partial. <laughs> And then I do the same thing going up to high F, um, stopping on each partial on the faster ones and articulating them. Oops, sorry, I forgot to do the slow drum first. And then the same thing articulated. There's a couple of cracked notes in there, so I'm going to start that over again. I do three octaves or two full octaves, three E's. I know some people like to be very specific about that. So two full octaves of glissandos and three E's. No, wait, dun, dun, dun. I lose track. You can tell me in the chat how many octaves I'm doing. <sighs> You 
might notice that I don't do the twice as fast on these. It's like a like higher. I do maybe a little bit less work in that range. It just gets very tiring and stressful. From there, I articulate the same range in seventh position and first position. I used to do all seven positions, but at some point there needs to be like a little shortcut every once in a while. So now I just do seventh and first to make sure that kind of the spectrum is covered. Yeah, it's not centering today. So I'll do one more slow glissando one. So I'm hearing all the partials and then try tonguing them again. As you can hear that low fifth and octave, that's kind of a sticking point for me. So I'll double check that every once in a while and you know, the slide's a little slow today. So that must be what's making that happen. Better. Not perfect, but better. I'll do a little Yamaha to buy myself some time. The upper slide's feeling a little sticky lately. I might need to take it in for some work. But see if we can fix that now. One more time on seventh position. I really don't like leaving this one out. The higher partials are hard. It's what makes French horn playing so hard, really. But that's why it's worth working on. You know, sometimes you just got to give yourself a couple of seconds off and do something to refocus your mind. In this case, it was Yamaha. Slide cream. Then I add another octave and I just go up and down without starting on the fifth. So this is going to kind of the top tones that we warmed up to in the arpeggios. Again, on the top notes where it doesn't necessarily come out right away, I just give myself a couple extra seconds of rest. sure the low notes are centered no matter what no matter how you go if the low notes aren't centered it really makes the high notes that you just played kind of meaningless <laughs> Super B flat, giving myself a little time so I can get it right for you all, hopefully. Hey, it worked. So I started playing trombone when I was in third grade. I was in between seven or eight years old. We had um, a really good school band program at my high school, which was Sable High School on Long Island. 
And um, so we played once a week for a while. And then in fifth grade and onwards, we kind of played band two or three days a week. And finally in high school, I was doing band and stuff like that every day. So I guess I've been playing since I was seven and now I'm 37. So that makes it 30 years. Um, here I do some arpeggios down into the low range. Just roots and fifths starting on middle B flat. <laughs> Sometimes I go down to pedal B and pedal B flat, but uh, I just don't feel like it today. Maybe I'm just a little bit lazy, which is okay for those notes. Uh, from here, <clears throat> I go to my final high range exercise, and that is octaves, starting on low E. Uh, this one starts on pedal E. It used to start on low E, and it used to be a very smooth and controlled um, three E's or two full octaves. And I would just do that with all air every single day. Eventually, I added in tonguing. When I got comfortable with the air and the air didn't become a problem. And then later on, I had this piece just a few years ago, actually, from this composer, Anne Heggy, which has me doing a lot of triplet octaves with um, like a lot of bouncing. And that was a real big challenge. I originally got the piece and I was like, this, I don't know. But I looked back at my warm up routine and I started to do like what I call overclocking or when you do more in your exercises than what's going to be asked for in the piece. And so I started to do those triplets at that rhythm, um, starting on a pedal E and doing four E's worth or three full octaves, because three octaves fits in four E's, right? Okay. So this is where I'm at now, but it is not where I started. It took a long time. <laughs> And you'll see a pivot down to the pedal notes in this exercise. For as much as I try to keep everything firm and straight, there's just going to need to be a pivot in an exercise like this. And you can try to minimize it as long as you want, but I do a lot of my minimization exercises with mirror like in the first half of the warm up. This, this exercise is mostly more about results and making sure nothing goes completely wrong. <laughs> I've 
heard that first time that the top B flat didn't quite sound, so I just redid it. Um, on B, you kind of just fake the B and see what happens. Lip it down in seventh position. <laughs> Again, if that B doesn't really come out when you're doing like a really fast bopping exercise like this, it's not the end of the world. As we get higher and as this exercise feels crazier and crazier, again, it's more about trying to do four octaves or three full octaves so that the three octaves or the two full octaves feels easier later. <laughs> You'll notice I very, very, very rarely use trigger F. Um, I think that the trigger F is usually too out of tune to use, so I'd rather go all the way out to sixth position rather than use the trigger F, the low one, in first position. My own personal choice. <laughs> And again, I just like to reiterate that this took a really long time to build up. So if you can't play stuff like this right now, like know that I couldn't for a very long time either. <sighs> From here, it just gets harder. So at a certain point, I'll stop doing the bouncing and I'll just go back to air slurs. But we'll see how far up we can get with it today. Now we're on high C. It's okay. Not great. Doesn't need to be great though. <laughs> Like kind of centering that low range, just making sure that the low range doesn't get too far out of whack. Because if like if I went down to those low notes and they sounded god awful, then I'm doing something wrong to hit the top notes. <clears throat> <laughs> Here, I really give myself a little bit of leeway with this exercise and. I don't worry too much if my tempo rebuttals or if the notes don't speak all 100%. It's just long-term adaptation over time. The hope is that six months from now, it'll sound better than it does today. <laughs> Boy, yeah, all right. I find that each day I get uh, around this F, F sharp range. And that's when I kind of have to switch back to just slurs. But we'll see. I'll try one more on the F sharp. Yeah, 
it just doesn't feel like it wants to sound today. But I try it. And then every once in a while, the F sharp clicks. Every once in a while, the G clicks. And pretty soon, the F sharp will be an everyday thing. And then the G will be the next note. So I'll switch back to just octaves with air for now. Even that sounds a little fuzzy, a little dicey. flip whether or not this last b flat comes out at all but you know you flip the coin every day and see if it's heads or tails maybe it squeaked out i don't know it felt like that coin landed on the edge and then i do um again every note that goes every Exercise that goes in the high range has to be followed by one that goes to the low range for me. So I do the same arpeggios into the pedal register, but I add in the thirds. So it's not just roots and fifths. And easier to hear than to explain. <laughs> but I try. OCD, Octave Confusing Disorder. I should start an octave up. Is that a low pedal B flat? I can never tell. So um, from here, I start to do some articulation exercise and double tongue exercising. Oh, sorry. No, I actually do a couple of lip slur exercises just in the middle range, like a Remington, and um, I think they're both Remington exercises. You might recognize them or might have heard them before. exercises. <clears throat> <laughs> Ooh, 
exercise is definitely a weak point so i try to listen extra hard to that and that's been a long-term emphasis it's making sure when i come back down with it's just air that each note is slotting a little better each day <laughs> And here's where I do um, 16ths, uh, starting on um, middle F in the staff, going up to high F and back down with single tongue, then single K tonguing, and then double tongue. So here's the single tongue. <laughs> Isolated K tongue, so I'm trying to get the the tuku 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 tuku. I'm trying to get the ku to sound as much like the two as possible. <sighs> a little bit. I want to try to drop the tongue as much as I can on the K-tongue to even that out, but it's a, it's a tricky practice. So I'll just do that low octave again on just the K-tongue, trying to make sure that it doesn't get too much of a wee high overtone sound in it. <laughs> If I know that my isolated K song, K tongue sounds like my T tongue, then I'll have a better chance of making an even double tongue sound good. Now I'll do double tongue. Um, I usually do this with a metronome at a couple of different tempos. I start at 168, and then I'll bump it up to 188, and then 208. <laughs> So that's 168. <clears throat> and then just to test outer limits, I'll go to quarter equals 208, and I'll try to do the same pattern. The low octave is probably not going to sound great, but if you can eventually get it to sound okay, then it means that slower stuff should sound good, theoretically. <laughs> something um here i do an exercise of my own where i try to mimic the way that violins cross strings by using triple tonguing so i triple tongue up an octave starting on a middle a da -da -da -dum. and then i just do that in a pattern that you'll hear i try to make sure that they're 
clean and I listen for the middle notes. All right, those are my notes. So. Same thing starting on A, but I just move the low note down in the diatonic scale, in the A scale. Um, or do I do a chromatic scale? I forget. You'll hear. It's either a diatonic or a chromatic scale. <laughs> same thing on just the major chord without the high octave and what i'm listening for is the repeats on the top and the bottom i want to make sure that i'm kind of repeating that low note exercise that I got from listening to Reggie Chapman play bass trombone. He uses his valve a lot to get in and out of the pedal register in a really smooth and cool way. So I heard that. I was like, how does he do that? And I started working on it slowly, and it goes like this. It's really neat. It's basically just going. 
It's a neat exercise. Um, I do some double tonguing on major triads. Sometimes I isolate the K. Yeah, Reggie's great. I isolate the K tongue first on the middle note of the triads. So I'll start on D and do that for an octave. Again, that was all on the K tongue. So now I'll make that the middle of the double tongue. register and come back down. exercises. One is from the very end of Joe Alessi's warm-up or the warm-up that he used to give out to his students and stuff like that. Um, it's hard to describe, so I'm just going to ask you to listen to this one. It's a lip slur, single tongue, double tongue. or so. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop them and I'll answer before I end the live stream. Josh, uh, through the routine, all those things are involved, but they're internalized. So what I really focus on is the sound I want to achieve. And after I did a few years of mirror work, so I knew that I could trust the corners, I really just let the sound of what I'm going for dictate what's about to happen. 
if things start going wrong, then I do like a diagnostic check-in about my air, my support, my chops and stuff like that. But things don't really go wrong very much anymore outside of the extreme registers. So again, it's just about like, I don't know if you were listening at the beginning, but maybe the first 30, 35, 40 minutes were all like really fundamental stuff in the first octave. And that's to really get all those other thoughts about airflow, air support, chops, and stuff like that. That's to just get those out of the way, to get them completely integrated into playing for the day. That's kind of the foundation that everything gets built on, even from the very first long tones. I'm just thinking of sound. Like, I just want a good, resonant, like, hopefully golden, beautiful sound. But even then, it's like, that's not something that I'd like think and like repeat to myself like a mantra. It's just more just like, that's the idea every time that I play and it's kind of just integrated into my being. All right. Uh, finally, two octave chromatic scale, um, single tongued as fast as possible, then double tongued. <laughs> F major scale, single tongued, and double tongued. My top E is a little suspect. I'm going to do that one more time. And that's the routine. Did in about an hour, 45 minutes today when I'm playing for y'all. So it's probably about 15 minutes faster than normal because I'm not taking my like normal coffee breaks or whatnot. But this is the minimum of what I do every day. And it's what's helped me develop my high range and kind of flexibility and ability to play lots of repertoire on recitals and concerts. Um, it is not, I wouldn't just jump in and do and. Um, a routine like this every day. I did a very simplified version of it that took about 40 minutes in the beginning. And over time, like really gradually, I've built in new exercises or expanded upon existing exercises to kind of, um, so that the virtuosity of it follows where I'm at in my progression. All right, so I think that's my first time ever documenting my full warm up. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave comments or email me at williamkeatslang at gmail.com. K-E-A-T-S is the middle thing. The rest is just my name. And for those of you that just sat through, like, that much trombone playing, like, way to go. I hope you never have to do it again like that. But I hope this is also useful. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. <laughs>